Station TV ご覧のスポンサーの提供でお送りします This is Ken Mackin bringing you a special edition of Motor Station TV. Today, Hiroshi Maruyama, a professional racer and motor journalist, gives his ride review for Honda RC413VS and Honda NSX on both street and racetrack. Although Maruyama has already tested the RC213VS on the racetrack in 2015 at Valencia, Spain, and in 2016 at Ebisu Circuit, Japan, This is his first ride on the RC 213 VS on the twisty mountain road. As for the seating position of RC 213 VS, for Maruyama, who is 167 centimeters or 5 foot 6, both balls of his feet touch the ground. The handlebars are low, and the forward crouch is stronger than on the CBR 1000 double R. This RC 213 VS is the Japanese market model. With only 70 metric horsepower s and the rev limit at a mere 6,000 RPMs. But this is enough power for use on the streets, and the limited power makes it easy for cruising the mountain roads. But when you try to pick up the pace, you quickly hit the rev limit. The quality of the ride is excellent. There is no stiffness in the suspension, and it absorbs the bumps in the road very well. The shift pedal, brake pedal, throttle grip. Clutch and brake levers are all factory racing works quality, and to be able to enjoy the feel of a real race bike on the street is the true value of riding the RC213 VS. Plus, it feels so good to get the attention of others on this bike. But truthfully, it would be a shame if you only enjoyed the RC213 VS on the streets. If I could own this bike, I would definitely get the racing kit parts and race on it. That would be the best way to enjoy this bike. In Spain, I tested the RC213 VS with full race kit, and boy was it good! I would love to ride the bike fitted with racing slicks on a racetrack. The NSX is a premium priced supercar at 23 million Japanese yen. But it's simply so easy to drive. The view in all directions is wide and clear, there is no difficulty for parking or driving in narrow streets. You just have to be careful of the low ground clearance, but there is enough ride height for everyday use. This is probably Honda's design policy, and it seems that they started their design from ease of driving, even for their supercars. The seating position is race like but not cramped, allowing comfortable and relaxed driving. This particular vehicle is fitted with the optional large carbon ceramic brake discs, but the initial brake touch is soft and easy to control. In any of the three power modes quiet, sports, and sports plus the power is controllable and easy to drive in the twisty mountain roads. Of course, it's possible to drive quite fast on this car, so we'll take it to the racetrack to test for speed. The only disappointment was that it rarely runs only using the electric motors. I found that it sometimes ran on only the electric motor when driving steadily at 60 km per hour or 37 mph. But as soon as you slightly press the gas pedal, the engine kicked in. I would have liked to drive more on pure electric motor power. This is because electric motor on NSX is aimed at improving the handling of the car. We'll test this some more on the racetrack. The RC213 VS and NSX, both super vehicles in their own right, are similar in that they are both very easy to ride. It's amazing how Honda has been able to produce such easy to ride, high spec super machines. Next, we'll test both vehicles at Fuji International Speedway. For RC213 VS, we'll also compare the Japanese market model with the European market model and full race kit fitted model tested in Valencia, Spain.
European market model is 159 horsepower. It's hard to believe this extreme machine is street legal. In power mode 1, the rear tire quickly loses grip and starts slipping. Even with the bike upright, the rear tire spin doesn't stop. On the street, it's an easy to ride bike, but once you give the throttle a good twist, you get the raw, brutal power of the bike and the fun of battling for control. I'm riding together with Honda factory racer Shinichi Ito. This power is addictive. Accelerating off the final turn, even with the traction control on, the front tire doesn't touch the ground. I hadn't expected the bike to run this aggressively. I definitely want the full race kit. The European market model is 159 horsepower, but the sound and engine feel is completely a racing machine, so I thought this was enough. But this race kitted version is so captivating. The race kit is 1.6 million yen in Japan, plus 21.9 million yen for the bike, but it's such a bargain to be able to own the exact same machine as a Honda MotoGP factory racer. As far as the specs go, the weight is almost exactly the same as a factory racer. Power output of race kit RC213 VS at 215 horsepower is only 10 to 20 horsepower less than the factory racer. The bike is aggressive, but there's nothing that makes it hard to ride, and you feel very safe on the bike. But you need to be a truly competent rider to be able to draw out the bike's true capability. It's close to riding a unicycle! Braking before turn, the rear tire lifts from the ground, and at acceleration the front tire doesn't touch the ground. Only during the turns are both tires firmly on the ground, and the rest of the time you'll be riding a unicycle. The riding experience is well worth the price you pay. Now for the Japanese market model at Fuji International Speedway. Is taking the 70 horsepower version to the racetrack a blasphemy? Certainly, 70 horsepower could be enough for the street. The dry weight of 170 kilograms is fairly close to 158 kilograms for the MotoGP racer and the agility and maneuverability is definitely MotoGP class, but the strongest setback is the rev limit. In a high-speed racetrack like Fuji International Speedway, the bike lacks acceleration off of every turn, which takes us back to the necessity of the race kit. With the race kit, you get 215 horsepower with MotoGP quality. Since owning an RC213 VS means fulfilling the dream of owning a true MotoGP racer, getting the race kit is a necessary part of the dream. The Honda NSX has two electric motors in front and one electric motor in the rear. The two front motors are used to increase rotational speed for the outer wheel during turns and are dedicated to improve handling. This allows the NSX, weighing 1.8 tons, to handle like a lightweight car, more like a Lotus weighing only 1.2 tons. The combined output of the 3.5 liter V6 twin turbo engine and three motors is 581 metric horsepower, but the hybrid power source is targeted to improve handling. Until before, all-wheel drive supercars use their powerful brakes to quickly decelerate, slowly turn the heavy car, and accelerate quickly with its huge power plant 
to record fast track times. The NSX, on the contrary, improves track times by increasing turning speeds. Hard braking into the turn, the rear starts to slightly slide. And accelerating from the middle of the turn, the NSX shows slight oversteering, controlling the rear slide with the gas pedal then accelerate towards the outside edge of the course as the car finishes the turn. Indeed, a sport-oriented handling which is fun to control. The carbon ceramic brakes can quickly stop from 280 km per hour while keeping the tires under control. The electric motor assists both the brakes and the control of the wheels during deceleration. So what does Honda intend to achieve by manufacturing the supercar and super motorcycle? For motorcycles, Honda has for a long time looked the other way while other manufacturers were busy in the superbike horsepower competition. Then the sudden release of the factory racer spec superbike RC213 VS. On the other hand is the 23.7 million yen supercar NSX, using the state-of-the-art technology to achieve supreme handling. Honda is not a mega corporation with unlimited financial resources. But perhaps Honda still chooses to produce these premium super vehicles because they want to continue providing dreams to motorcycle and car lovers. Honda took care to design both super vehicles so that anyone can enjoy the state-of-the-art racing technology. Perhaps both vehicles will be too well behaved for wealthy owners just looking for a flashy trophy. But it seems that Honda's true goal is to share the pleasure of high-performance vehicles with the regular driver or rider. I am so lucky to be able to test these two premium machines. Testing either of these super machines would have been such a pleasure, much less test driving both premium vehicles at the same time has been a memorable event in my motorsporting career. I would love to do it again if I ever get the chance.